Hey, I'm here with Tings Chak. Tings Chak is a researcher with the uh, Tricontinental Institute for Social Research. Right? That's right. Uh, we're going to talk about the biggest problem in the world, which is poverty, right? In the last four decades, 70% of the world's poverty reduction, that's 70% of everyone who was taken out of poverty, was taken out of poverty in China. So that's a big contribution made by one country. That is pretty amazing. So um, if you think about it, that means that the, the Chinese government, the, the hated, reviled Chinese government, uh, has actually been the biggest contributor to, to rescuing the, the women, children and men of the world um, out of starvation level poverty and, and giving them food, shelter and dignity. Absolutely. I mean, I think just to give an kind of absolute numbers, it's hard to comprehend, but in the last four decades, 850 million people were lifted out of extreme poverty in China. I think it gets rarely reported on. Yeah, I mean, it should be a huge thing. Like if a white guy called Steve wakes up in Camden Town in London, I know right? Steve. Oh, you know, Steve. <laughs> Supposing some white guy anywhere wakes up and says, I found a way to solve poverty. Look, this is how you do it. A, B, C, bang. Surely the world would beat a path to his door and everybody would, would adopt those methods, but we don't see this happening. So, so why is that? I mean, I think that's one of the reasons, um, as the Tricontinental, we wanted to do a study on, on the poverty issue in China, because it's something, it's one of the greatest stories of humanity ever, really. And it's a historic achievement. Uh, have there been any, like, uh, Western documentaries made on this topic? Sure. I mean, I actually had a chance to talk with um, uh, Robert Lawrence Kuhn, who's quite interesting. He spent a lot of time since the 80s uh, going back between the US and, and China. Uh, he's actually a, a venture capitalist uh, and, and hmm. saw the growth of China and saw the, the, the changes. And so he did a documentary really um, quite fascinating. It was a partnership between PBS, which is a public state media from the US, and then also CGTN, which is the English language or international uh, public media in China. And together they did a, um, they went to the basically countryside to, to do a documentary on how the processes work, you know, who's in the countryside, who gets lifted out of poverty, what are the democratic processes in the grassroots level, which is quite interesting. Shortly thereafter, it out, got pulled off air in the US. It was de facto censored um, based on some editorial concerns. So there's also some interests, I think, in not talking about poverty or the alleviation of poverty because somehow that might seem threatening to, you know, hear those <laughs> stories from China. Yes, yes. Somebody might think, um, oh, uh, another government is doing their job better than we are. So we can't have that. What's the secret? What do they do? Probably the most important is this three guarantees. So in order for someone to be considered lifted out of extreme poverty, you have to make sure you have access to uh, compulsory free education. In China, it's nine years. Mm -hmm. You have access to basic medical health. Uh, and you have access to safe housing that has running water and electricity. So only when all these sort of indices mm -hmm. come together, looking at a kind of multi-dimensional, multi-layered approach to poverty, mm -hmm. then someone can be lifted out of poverty. So that is something that's probably quite... I think innovative and new um, that China contributed mm. to the you know efforts around poverty reduction that have been mm. happening around the world, but oftentimes aren't sustained mm -hmm. beyond a particular program or particular funding. That you know when it ends, people fall back into poverty. The second part is really sending people the to the countryside to understand mm. the realities of what's happening. So you have to go literally neighborhood to neighborhood, village to village, knock on the doors and they send 800,000 people from the party to actually knock on doors and figure out, assess. They sent 800,000 people to knock mm -hmm. on doors to find who was poor and where they lived. Yep, and from there um, created a, a system of saying, okay, there are actually 100, 100 million people still mm -hmm. living under ex uh, extreme poverty based on the set mm -hmm. of measures I just mentioned. And then after that, they sent another 3 million people to go and live and work. Mm -hmm and pair with the families, um, you know, one person might be paired with five families and you stay and live in the countryside until, you know, you figure out, oh, what does, you know, Xiao Wang need, you know, to make sure he stays in school? What does, you know, the anti Zhang need? 
so that you know she can deal with the fact that she has a disability and, mm. and you know can't work and it's that level of of you know uh, addressing poverty that's why it's called you know precise or targeted poverty alleviation because it was really looking at, at the specific cases a human level mm. not a statistical level of, okay <laughs> we have 100 million people okay then let's send 100 million dollars it's right. not quite like that I mean, it's a, it's a tricky topic to make interesting, but uh, I mean, the Chinese TV people did do it last year. They did a, a series called Minning Town, uh, which was based on a true story, as they say. Uh, did you watch it? They didn't broadcast it here. Yeah, I, I, I definitely binge watched it. You laugh and you cry. And basically it's about, I mean, one of the, of the, the party members being sent to the countryside and helping a very poor village. Um, in this earlier phase of poverty alleviation in the kind of 80s period, you know, you have people migrating to the cities to work in the factories, but then you also have the, you know, the villages that needed a boost, mm -hmm. you know, and in terms of production. So it was about mushroom farming. There's also reality TV shows too, of, you know, celebrities going to the countryside. And, and it's just funny. There's like a lot of, you know, let's say pop culture also around this that helps kind of, I think, mm -hmm. support uh, the idea that this is a national project. So I think that's quite interesting. It's not just a government project, but also something that people support. If you ask an average person, they'll say, yeah, poverty alleviation is something to be proud of. It's interesting that these studies of poverty alleviation, like, like Minning Town and these movies, are, are sometimes quite critical of the government too. Also in the study, and also in Minning Town, it talks about questions of corruption. You know, there's a lot of, you know, we know that in China right now, corruption and anti-corruption is a big part. And there have been a lot of cases found around corruption, but it's also, quite publicly announced and quite publicly addressed and and one thing that's really interesting about that documentary from Lawrence um, uh, Robert Lawrence Kuhn is that uh, there is a whole system of you know third party evaluation that happens so to make sure that you know officials aren't doing you know aren't, aren't making an extra buck here and there and and so they send also brigades or groupings of students university mm -hmm. students that come and there's a really interesting scene in the film uh, in the documentary, where the students are basically grilling the officials and say, okay, look at the books. We went to every house to check and they do these random searches and there's a whole kind of third party way. You know, someone sent me a video of uh, taken in Xinjiang of the day the poverty alleviation official has to leave town. Yeah, and every village member, they all line up to hug him. And you know, you can't, you can't fake something like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you've been living there, I mean, a lot of these people are sent to villages, they don't have existing connections, you know, and they might not even speak the local dialect and you live there, you're far from your family, you miss home too. Mm -hmm. And you're there amongst the people for years, you build those real relationships and people also people build trust. Wonderful. Okay, I've been talking to, to Tings Chak, who's written a wonderful book on poverty alleviation methods uh, in China, uh, full, of, full of data and statistics and detail about how it's done. Thank you very much, Tings. Thank you very much.